uh, if you're born again, what part of, of our being is born again? Our spirit, okay? Our bodies are not born again yet. That's, the, that's a future redemption. That's, that's when we come in with the Bible talks, our full redemption, okay? So our body is subject to a lot of different things. Sickness, if somebody come up and slap me, I would feel it, okay? If somebody slapped you, you would feel it. If you mash your finger, you feel it. So the body is not redeemed yet, and it is subject, still subject to the curse that's on the earth. Now, how many know there's a curse on this earth? Okay, that's over in Genesis. We don't have time to check all the scriptures out, but I assume you know that. And so our bodies are subject to diseases. Our bodies are subject to getting hurt, subject to a lot of different things. Our feelings are subject to get hurt. So there's a, the part of us that is saved is our bo- uh, not our body, but our spirit man, okay? <clears throat> and you have to realize that. Now, who can tell me when the curse will be lifted? All right, remember I preached on that Sunday? When, we, when the sons of God are manifested, remember that? When we're glorified, right down here, when we're glorified. Our glorification, when we come into our glorified bodies, then we will never have to worry about sickness or sin or the power of sin or getting hurt or whatever. But until then, we're on the earth and we're subject that if you went out there and you get in the highway and an 18-wheeler comes down the road and hits you, <clears throat> you're out of here. But your spirit is still saved, and you'd end up in heaven. And so it's still good at this point. So we've got to remember that. <clears throat> now, let's look at our first scripture there, and let's put it on the board. Romans 5.18. Romans 5.18 will be our first scripture there. Here we go. Well, then, as one man's trespass... One man's fault, step, and falling away led to condemnation for all men. So one man's act of righteousness leads to acquittal and right standing with God and life for all men. All right? So the one man that sinned, that made sinners out of all of us, was Adam. But the one man, Jesus Christ, that died on that cross made us righteous. So we have no righteousness of our own, so God gives us his righteousness. And so therefore we are righteous with his righteousness. And our spirit man is saved when we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us, if thy will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, Thy shall be saved. Now, one man's act of righteousness, that was Jesus Christ, leads to acquittal and right standing with God. That's that's important. A lot of people don't, don't know that. And so what you have on the earth is you have men and women that have not been born again, and they're still their spirit man is dead towards God. You wonder, well, you might have somebody you know, well, why don't they love the Lord? Why don't they serve the Lord? They can't, they did. Spiritually. We understand that. So you have to understand that, that death is separation. Death is separation. When man sinned, he was separated from God and his, his spirit was, had died. Um, <clears throat> Put Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 1. All right, and you, that's us, he made, that is God made alive, God made us alive when we were dead. What part of us was dead? 
our spirit, slain by our trespasses and sins. Okay? So, but while we were yet in that condition, he made us alive, okay? And now he brought us to that point in which we will realize that we were separated from God, that we were dead towards God, and therefore we gave our life to Christ, and the Holy Spirit went to work, regenerated, and made our spirit man new uh, spirits. We got new spirits, recreated spirits in us. And therefore now we are alive. But somebody that has not been born again can't understand that. Why are we here tonight? Because we've been born again. Now we know other people are sick and there's different reasons that people can't come. But when you're born again, you know it. How many knows it in here? Let's see your hand. Explain it to me. It's hard. <laughs> you, you just, all you know, you listen, love the Lord. I mean, it's just, there's a change in your life. And uh, so you're not dead towards God. You, you are able to communicate with God because you're alive now, alive. You, he made alive. He, so who made us alive? God. When? When we were dead, we couldn't help ourselves, And he made us alive. And then, of course, we're coming along in life, and we understand that, and we realize we're lost, we receive Jesus, and then that becomes experimental to us. Hey, I've been made alive. Jesus is real, okay? So that's why we are alive. Put, uh, put uh, John 1, 12, and 13 up there now. Now, as we move along in our Christian life, our spirit man, the Bible says our spirit man is renewed day by day, but our outer man is decaying. That's really encouraging. I want to show you that scripture in a little bit. All right, now look at this. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, okay? So we did that on that day. We received Christ as our personal Savior. He gave the authority, the power, the privilege, the right to become children of God, that is to those who believe and heave to, trust in, and rely on his name. And the next verse is a very powerful verse. How in the world did you get born again? All right, look at that scripture. Who owe their birth. Who do you owe your birth to? God. We owe our birth neither to bloods nor to the will of the flesh. That is the physical impulse, nor to the will of man. That is the natural father. But we owe our birth to God. They are born of God. Ex Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And that's something he did for us. That's why the law can't regenerate you. That's why your good looks can't regenerate you. Move on, Bob. Uh, <laughs> that's why your good works can't regenerate you. It takes God to birth you. And he did it by his spirit. You were dead in your trespasses. I was dead in my trespasses. And he made us alive. Wow. So we owe our birth to who? God. So what is there for us to do but to praise him? Okay. Now, we go through the word of God. And we see that now that we are his children, he's given us authority and power to be his children, uh, he's laid out into the scriptures how we should walk. How many's got kids in here? Did you teach your kids how to walk? Yeah. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Don't fuss. Don't argue. We taught them all those good things. You know, we told them how to conduct themselves at, uh, at uh, school or at church. Uh, we taught them th in those things. Well, God teaches us. He's our Father, so He teaches us how to live down here, love one another, and, and be happy. But He says, but you know what? Your, your outer man is not born again. You are subject. If you step out in front of a car, you're in heaven. Hello? Yeah. See, we've got to understand that, that, that our outer man is not born again, is not...
deemed yet. And our outer man is subject to germs, all kind of diseases, starvation. If, a, if, if a somebody shoots me, I'm out of here, but I'm still alive. I'll be with Jesus. See? But later on, my body will be redeemed and resurrected, meet up with my body again, and then I'll be spirit, soul, and body. So how many sees the picture? All right, people's going to ask you questions. Well, why do people get sick? That's simple. Adam, sin. Right here. Disobedience of one man. Man died. It was separated from God. So God begins to put his redemption plan into operation, and, and he plans it, okay, I'm going to get their spirit saved first and let them live down here for a little while, just a little while, like a vapor, and then, uh, and then uh, their bodies are going to die, but then their bodies will be resurrected later on, and their spirit that's been born again, that's in heaven with God, will come down and unite with that glorified body, and now they'll be spirit, soul, and body again. So the reason that people get sick, it's not all the time they have sinned. Sometimes people get sick because they have sinned. We, we understand that. Um, health, good health practices. You know, we have to realize that these bodies are temporal. They, they, they are not permanent. They are subject to germs. They are subject to getting sick. They're subject to uh, a lot of different things. We all understand that, okay? And so we have to make sure that we take care and watch how we walk. Don't, don't, run, don't walk out in front of cars. That's bad. That's a no-no. Especially 18-wheeler. Eight, <laughs> Do you realize how many people get killed every year in automobiles? Hmm? If I, if I gave you the, the statistics tonight that people get killed in automobiles, it would be shocking to everybody because these bodies are not been redeemed yet, okay? So these bodies have to be taken care of, and we could go a long time with that. Now, let's turn to Romans 4, 24 and 25, justification. We've been justified before God. Turn to that on the board. <clears throat> but they were written for our sakes too. Righteousness standing acceptable to God will be granted and credited to us also who believe and trust and are here to rely on God who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. So when we come and accept Christ as our personal Savior, go to, go to 25. Who was betrayed and put to death because of our misdeeds and was raised to secure our justification, our acquittal, making our account balanced and, and absolving us from all guilt before God. So everything that Jesus Christ did on the cross was for us. And we are fully justified, acquittal. The remission of sins is like it never happened. It's not there anymore. Now I want you to think of your past. Just think of your past. And you see all your past and all that you did that was ugly. It's gone. It never exists. It don't exist no more. That's how great this salvation is. Blotted out, removed as far as the east is from the west. There's nothing in your past or my past that God would charge me with because it ain't there. It's dissolved by the blood of Jesus. So we start out brand new when we were born again. Now God has made provisions. How many get up in the morning and say, well, I think I'll sin at least three times a day? We don't. But if you do, now notice the provision, 
If you do, turn to 1 John 1, 9. Make sure we understand that, 1 John 1, 9. If you do, now we're walking along here. Our past is gone. We've been born again. Our bodies have not been born again. They're not redeemed yet. They're subject to getting hurt. They're subject to get sick because of the curse, okay? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, that's King James, and that's good. That is not for people that are unsaved or they're not saved. That's for Christians. That scripture is for Christians. Mark that down. Understand that. John is talking to Christians. In the verse before that, uh, he says, Now, if you have sinned, don't say that you haven't. If you have, just confess it, and God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you, and now it's no more. Okay? It's no more. So we're able to walk down here without sin being on us. Because of the provision. Now, suppose your body gets sick. Well, God has made provisions for that too. He's told us that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. Uh, is everybody healed all the time? I wish I could say yes. I prayed for people, they die. I prayed for people, they got well. They got, they got healed. So I have a long road of testimonies that I can give of people being healed by, by, by prayer of the saints and by me and laying hands on them and I can give you testimonies of that I can give you testimonies of my, of my children being healed of all those warts on their fingers and and my mother had a high fever one time and went by we prayed and just like that the fever left she was healed so I got testimony but then I got testimonies that I prayed for folks that died but that doesn't mean the Word of God is not true. So we have to understand that. And I don't understand all the uh, buts and the ands and this and that, and I don't have to. I trust God. I know God this well. He does never do anything wrong. He's perfect. And you need to get that in your mind. And maybe things don't turn out all the time like we like it, and which it doesn't. But look at all the times it has turned out good. Amen? Amen. All right. So there's a lot of things in this whole world that uh, we don't understand, but then maybe one day we will. Now, turn to Romans uh, 3.23 first. 3.23. This, this scripture here pretty well goes along with... Uh, Since all have sinned and, and are falling short of the honor and glory which God restored and received. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, what's new? We know that. Okay. So uh, Romans uh, 5, 18 and 19 says, 18 says, By the disobedience of one man we all became sinners, but by the obedience of uh, Jesus then we all became justified. Okay. So we don't want to hang up on that. Uh, turn, if you will, to uh, verse, yeah, okay. Turn to Romans uh, 3.24 now. Romans 3.24. That's, three, that's 3 John 1.1. 1, 1. All, right, all are justified and made upright in the right standing with God by their good looks freely and graciously by His grace, His unmerited favor and mercy through the redemption which is provided in Christ Jesus. And you can rest in that. He did it. We accept it. We receive it. We are free from sin. We are redeemed. 
But our bodies are still subject to diseases, 18-wheelers, bombs, guns, people shooting us. But one day, these bodies will be glorified. And I have a glorified body, and no curse will be able to touch us then. But until then, we have to walk soberly, walk with gratitude and appreciation for what the Lord has done thus far. Okay? Now, t turn to uh, Romans 5, 5, 2. Sanctification. A lot of people don't understand that we are in a process. Everybody say, I am in a process. And now that process is called sanctification, okay? That's God working in us, getting all of those uh, hurts healed up, disappointments healed, all of those um, bitterness, resentments, unforgiveness out of us. Now, I can honestly say I'm standing before you. Let God be, be my judge. I have no resentment, no bitterness, no nothing in me against anybody. Not against God. A lot of people are mad at God. Now, can you say that? But between you and God, is there anything between you and God? I see one person shaking her head. That's good. Don't, don't, you know, God knows, don't you know? God knows. See, if I'm not a good teacher, if, I don't, if we don't respond to the Word of God, if, if you're sitting there with resentment and bitterness towards people, you're going get, you're gonna, you're gonna to get sick. You see that? <laughs> That's one thing that, that brings sickness to us and it brings the demonic powers to us if we don't forgive and bless people. Well, Bob, you haven't been hurt. Oh, oh, oh wait, oh, oh, you want to hear some of my testimonies? Huh? No, you don't want to hear. No, you don't want to hear. But I love them all. And I even preach their, 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 their funerals for a lot of them. See, that you want to keep yourself clean inside. Because everybody ain't going to do exactly like you want all the time. And everybody may not be as perfect as you are. Love me, children. <laughs> Tell it, Bob. I believe it will. Now, I'm going to shock some of you. Now, you hold on to the chairs, but everybody in this church ain't perfect. I mean, your kids are the only one perfect. <laughs> How many love me now? <laughs> Come on, church. It's so true, you know. I told Susan a long time ago, she's trying to keep our kids. I said, honey, listen, we'll do the best we can. But one day they're going to go out there in that real world, and they're going to really, they're going to meet the devil himself. And our job is to teach them how to resist, get the Word of God in them, and when they meet the devil in somebody, they'll know how to handle it. Come on, church. Because you are not going to be able to guard them from everything that, that you want to guard them. You want to. And even, even God's kids messed up. Yeah, are you listening? Amen. Adam and Eve, they were God's children like we were his children. Yes. And Adam messed up. And his father was God. Well, we have messed up too and our father is God. So, you love people, everybody's not perfect, teach your kids to say no to all ungodliness. Titus chapter 2, verse right, 11. I'm glad you remembered that. All right. Sanctification is what God is doing in us now. Look, through Him also we have our excess entrance introduction by faith into this grace, state of God's favor, in which we firmly and safely stand. And let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. All right, that's verse 2. And let's go to uh, 15 and 16. 15. But God's free gift is not at all to be compared to the trespass 
His grace is out of all proportion. Now notice that. Comparing the trespass of Adam, and then there is uh, God's uh, uh, grace here. And they're not it, to be compared because his grace is so far greater out of proportion to, to that sin. Look what it says. To fall uh, portion to the fall of man. For if, for if many died th through one man's falling away, his lapse, his offense, much more profusely did God's grace and the free gift that comes through the undeserved favor of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound and overflow to and for the benefits of many. So, yeah, you got sin over here, but grace is so much grace over here that is far, the proportion of it is so much greater than that fall. See, we've done it the other way around. Sin is so big. And we miss the bigness of God's goodness and grace. Reverse it. That's God's love. Wow. God's grace and mercy is so much abundant. And one day, we probably nobody will even remember Adam, what he did. Because the cycle's going all the way around. And one day we're going to be glorified. I preached on that Sunday. And the curse will be lifted from the earth, you know. Wow, tremendous. You sit here tonight assuming that you haven't went out and did some sin, that you know the scriptures. You, you don't have any sin on you. <laughs> Do you? I mean, you can confess if you want to. You've been throwing rocks at anybody? <laughs> Spitballs? <laughs> Are you mad at anybody? You burn anybody's eggs lately? I mean, let's get down to where we live. I mean, if God's grace is, is so, uh, the, the proportion of it is so much greater, it can take care of anything out there. Yes, amen. Do, do we believe that? Yes. That's what God is telling us here tonight by His Word. Yes. Yes. And you ought to be able to shout the victory tonight on that. Well, there's some things in my life I don't like. Yeah, I know there's some things in my life I don't like, but I tell you what, I'm free from them. Amen. 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 I tell people, and this is what you have to watch out for. Missy knows this. You, can't get, you cannot get involved in their whirlwind. Right, Missy? <laughs> right, Rachel? Because you'd be going around too. <laughs> it took me a while to learn that as a pastor because it seemed like I'd get sucked right in and they're going around and I'm going around with them. Especially when you got kids, you know. No, let them go around. Just settle. Don't worry about it. Hold steady. God's on the throne. His grace is there. Just hold steady. Get through the storm. It takes a little while. In the meantime, sing. Like the, like the psalmist said, I bless the Lord in my affliction. Susan me has been over there for the last two weeks praising God, interceding for the church, reading the scriptures. I mean, just having a great time, a, a coughing and a spitting and a going to the bathroom and, and checking each other's fever and, and, uh, and, uh, but, and blessing the Lord in my affliction. Uh, quit our bitching and we just start uh, saying, God, in my affliction, not in my bitching, I'm going to preach you. <laughs> okay, well, hey, watch it up there now. Woo, glory. Let's go to Romans 8, 8. Real quick, like, turn, just turn to Romans 8, the first chapter of 8. I mean, the first verse of 8, Romans. 
I want to share something real quick with you. Time is passing, and uh, what I want you to see. Acts, Romans 8. Now I'm going to run you through verse chapter 1 up to 8, okay? Chapter 1, when you read Romans, Paul begins to address all of mankind and lets everybody know that all have sinned and come short to the glory of God. Nobody is without excuse. All have sinned. He talks about the sinfulness of, of mankind. That's chapter 1. Then he moves to chapter 2. And the religious people are there. Yeah, Paul, give them down the country. Tell them just how naughty they are. And Paul turns to them and says, wait a minute. In chapter 2, here's what he says to start with. Therefore you have no excuse or defense or justification, O man, whoever you are who judges and condemns another. So he gets on the Pharisees, the religious people, in chapter 2. Read that all the way down there. He really, he really puts it on them. And in fact, in verse 4, he says, Are you so blind as to trifle with and presume upon and despise and underestimate the wealth of his kindness? The wealth of his kindness that he uh, has restored on? Forbearance and long-suffering, patience, are you unmindful or actually ignorant of the fact that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repent to change your mind and inner man to accept God's will. So God's goodness floods into our soul. And we just, I have, there's times I just had to fall on my face and repent. You ever do that? I mean, the, the goodness of God, the kindness of, it's, I just, God, who am Bob Tilton that you're mindful of me? I'm like the psalmist. That's in Job, that's in the book of Psalms, and that's in Hebrews. What is man? That you give man the authority of the earth and to take dominion and, and rule this earth for you. Who, what is man? The, the heavens belong to God, but the earth has been given to man. Some people say, well, why does God allow that? No, why do we allow it? If we really take it in our place. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Ruling and reigning with Christ. He gives us grace and the abundance of righteousness, or the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness to reign in this life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Why is this happening to me? Why are you allowing it to happen to you? In many cases, we can stop it. In some cases, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change. And, what's the next one? And... God grant me the serenity to ch accept the things I can't change, uh, the, wis uh, the, the, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know, ha, dog the difference. <laughs> it's there, it just has to come out. Okay, now, when you go to ch chapter 2, you read all about the religious folks, and Paul gets on their case. and say, you just as bad. In fact, you probably worse. You say you think you know. So he gets on their case. And then when you go to uh, chapter 3 and all, he sums them all up, right on up to uh, there's none righteous, no, not one. All has gone their own way. So he puts us all under the guilt and all uh, are guilty. And he comes to uh, uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All who? All the religious folks. All of the non-religious folks. Everybody has become a sinner because of the disobedience of one man. But by the obedience of one man, Christ Jesus, we all have been justified and made right with God and given His righteousness where we can come right into His presence and give Him glory and praise. 
And if we do sin, being a born-again Christian, oh, I gladly confess it and receive the, the, the fact that he forgives me and cleanses me from all unrighteousness, and I can sing, the blood has not lost its power. I'm clean before you tonight because of the blood of the Lamb. Not because of my good looks, and we're not arguing with that. <clears throat> oh, are we? <laughs> All right, now we go over, and he's talking to Christians now. After this, in Romans, the last part of Romans 3 and 4, he talks about uh, we're justified. He talks about Abraham uh, was justified uh, before uh, he was circumcised. Uh, before the law came, the law has no power. We died to the law. The law was there, but we died to the law. We died with Christ. He goes right on through the Scriptures. verse Chapter 5, verse 6, he talks about we died with Christ and, uh, at, on the cross, and sin shall not have dominion over us. And it goes on to verse 7. It talks about we have been uh, divorced from the law. The law has nothing to do with our salvation anymore. Someone said, well, my goodness, you don't keep the law. No, that's what you do when you walk in the Spirit. You can't help but keeping the law. See, walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's simple. It's not complicated. And so the result of walking in the Spirit is you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The result of walking in the Spirit, you do not fulfill uh, or break God's law. But if you do, oh, thank God for 1 John 1, 9. But then on the other hand, Paul says, but don't you know that you died to sin? Sin shall not have dominion over it. He takes us up to another notch of understanding that we don't have to let sin dominate and control us and manipulate us. And then he goes on in through verse 8 and talks about there's 21 promises in, in, in chapter 8. Right on down to the glorification and nothing shall separate us from the love of God. In fact, I'm going to read the last uh, let's start with verse chapter 8 verse uh, 31, okay? Here we go. What, shall, what then shall we say to all of this? All of this what? All of this that we've just covered, from verse 1 all the way to verse 8, all of that. What are we going to say to all of this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be our foe if God is on our side? Is God on your side? Yes. Yeah. Then who can be against you? And who do you care that is against you? you got God on your side. All right, go to the next verse. Look what it says now. What shall we say to all of this? He, he who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Let's stop there for a moment. Do we realize the pain that was in God the Father's heart when he had to see his son go through all that suffering? Now think of that through for a moment. It's real, real pain. Christ was every bit of God, but he was every bit of man. He felt every pain in his body. And he didn't do it for himself. He did it for us. Look what it says. But gave him up for us all. Then this comes right out. Will he not also with him, with Christ, freely and graciously, graciously give us all other things? we got so many things now we don't know how to handle. We, uh, can I be ugly for just about one minute? Uh, I don't think it's anybody. But remember, this goes out into the world. This tape goes out into the world. Uh, so many people got everything. They're unthankful. 
For example, what do we need? <laughs> what do we need? I can hear some, I can hear some things right uh, about a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> what do we need? You got shelter, clothes, cars, heat at home, air conditioning. Our brother can't see right now, but that's only a short time. One day you'll have that glorified body. He'll be able to see. There's people that has eyes and can't see as much as he's, he can see in the spirit. He probably sees more in the spirit than some of us that has eyes. Will he not freely, listen, freely and graciously. Yeah, if you want this money, here, take it, take it. No, God ain't that way. He graciously, freely. God is a giving God. Go to the next verse. Ooh. Oh, sorry. He, all right, we said that. Next verse, 33. Who shall bring any charge against Elizabeth? Mrs. James. Missy. Who, 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 me. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? That's us. When it is God who justifies. Who justified you? God. Keep that in mind. Just as if you have never sinned. It is not there no more. It's vacuum. It's, it's not there. It's gone like it never was. That is, who puts us in right relationship to himself. Who puts you in right relationship with God? God. Let me hear it. Come on. Jesus. Say, God. 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 Oh, God did it, man. Children, listen to me tonight, man, before I get up here and get happy. God did it. So who can come against you? God did it. God chose you before the foundation of the world. He justifies you. He is sanctifying you. He will glorify you one day. Everything down here might not go exactly like we like, but folks, all this is passing away. It's but a vapor. You're here and you're gone. See, I can say that. I'm 82, and I've how many people have sat out here 50 some years of and they all they gone. They're not on the earth no more. They're gone. And I told them the same thing. Now they up there with that great crowd of witnesses. You know where that is? Hebrews what? 12. That great who's that great cloud of witnesses up there? All the people that we knew that knew the Lord are up there saying, Hey man, it's worth it all. Hang in there, boys. Hang in there, it's worth it. We're in the glory. We're talking about glory. We're talking about glory that you know, oh, you can't comprehend. We're talking about the glory of God everywhere. It's glory for breakfast. It's glory for lunch. It's glory for supper. Midnight glory. 24-7 glory. Throughout eternity, it's glory. And we worried about the little garbage down here? Are you out there, church? Yes. What did Jesus say tonight? Cast all your cares upon Jesus. All right, let's move on before you get me singing. Who puts us in right relation to himself. Some, I ask, uh, do you, uh, somebody asks me, Bob, do you have right relationship with God? Y yes, I do. Well, well, how did you get that right relationship? He, he put me in right relationship with himself. That just blew their socks right off of them. 
He, he did it before the foundation of the world. He knew everything about me. He planned for me. He made preparations for me. Whew. What a God we serve. Who shall come forward and accuse or impeach Bob or the shield of faith whom God has chosen? Will God who acquaints us? Give me the answer. Will God? No. Next. Who is there to condemn Bob in the shield of faith? Will Christ Jesus, the Messiah, who died, or rather, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, actually pleading as he intercedes for us? And he's up there interceding. I don't know about you, but many a time I've, kneel, I've knelt down, I say, Lord Jesus, just intercede for me tonight. Amen. Get in bed and go to sleep. Just, just, just to poop to pray. Next, I got to quit using those street languages. Who shall ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering? No. Affliction? No. Tribulation? No. Calamity? No. Distress? No. Persecution? No. Or hunger? No. Or destruction? No. Or peril? No. Or sword? No. Next. Even as it is written, for thy sake we are put to death and all that... Now Paul is putting his self in the midst of the foreign line here and say, listen, even as it is written, for thy sake, we are put to death all the day long. We are regarded and counted as sheep for the slaughter. And sometimes that we are. But look what he says. Go to the next verse. Look what he says. Yet amidst all these things that he just mentioned, we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. So why don't you got a few hard knocks down here? Nothing be compared to the glory. Do I, do, am I coming through? See, if our mind is so earthly, we can't see the glory. If we can't see that all this is temporary. A vapor, a flower, it blooms, it fades, it's gone. Next. For I am persuaded beyond doubt, Paul says, am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers. And the last verse, well, we got two more verses. Nor height, nor death, nor things else in all creation will be able to separate us, me, you, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the th verse 40. Verse 40, we got one more verse. You're in Romans 9, 1 there. Last time I read it, it had the, must have been the wrong chapter. <laughs> I tell you what, I don't think we need another verse. I think, it's, I think God made it very clear. You got the victory tonight? Yes, nothing will separate us from the love of God. That's God talking to us. That's God the Father talking to us. We've got the victory. Victory. And his name is Jesus. Father, we...